In this course, we've emphasized the four basic plastic processing variables. But there are also some additional inputs affecting the process that the blow molder must also understand. For example, raw material variations. Polymer molecules come in various sizes, also called the molecular distribution. The horizontal line represents molecule length. The vertical line is the number of molecules of each length. This shows several distributions. At the end of this distribution, there are short molecules. At the other end of the distribution are long molecules. The average size is here. But Various lots of plastic, even though they have the same average molecular length, can have a different distribution, and you will likely find slight differences in their flow behavior. You may be using a blend of virgin and regrind plastic. The combination will alter the distribution. The amount of change caused by regrind will depend on the percent of regrind being used and the type of plastic. As mentioned previously, for most plastics, adding regrind reduces the overall viscosity. But for high density polyethylene, regrind often has a higher viscosity because of some molecular cross linking. When using a virgin regrind blend, to get the same plastic processing conditions, you may have to adjust the machine settings. Changing to another plastic supplier or even a new lot of material from the same supplier may require machine control adjustments. Remember, the goal is to get the same part properties by maintaining the same four basic plastic processing conditions. You may occasionally find a problem called melt fracture. It is a condition where the plastic flow out of the die head becomes unstable. The plastic seems to surge and the parison becomes rough and distorted. For each plastic and die head, there is a critical range of flow rates where melt fracture occurs. The melt fracture can be eliminated at flow rates either above or below this critical range. Plastics of the same type but from different suppliers have different sensitivities to melt fracture. The melt fracture range is also affected by the melt temperature and the die head gap. There are three processing conditions that can be adjusted to solve a melt fracture problem. They are to reduce the extrusion rate increase the melt temperature and increase the die head opening. Horizontal bands or rings can develop in the parison as it is extruded. The bands are a variation in the parison thickness. These can be caused by the extruder screw. As the screw rotates, partially melted granules back in the feed zone of the extruder can surge, giving a pressure pulse to the melted plastic. Pressure surges transmitted to the die head will cause horizontal bands in the final product that matches the screw RPM. This is an example of horizontal bands or rings caused by pressure surges. Often, Raising the extruder rear zone temperature will solve the problem by starting the melting process earlier. Another cause of pressure rings can be the parison programmer. It may be overcorrecting. In this case, the horizontal rings will not match the extruder RPM. A solution is often to reduce the controller response time, the gain setting. The weight of the parison will cause stretching and thinning of the upper and middle portion of the parison due to gravity. Its effect is to reduce part thickness in the middle and upper regions. 
For small items with fast parison formation, this may not be a problem. But for heavier parisons, the amount of sag must be controlled and be consistent. Parison sag is affected by the melt temperature, the parison extrusion rate, and the mold open time. A lower melt temperature will increase the parison strength. Faster parison extrusion will give it less time to sag, and closing the mold as quickly as possible will also give the parison less time to sag. Sometimes a hole develops in the parison as it's being extruded. It can be caused by an air bubble trapped in the plastic when the plastic was melted. The usual solution is to raise the extruder rear zone temperature. Air can also come from a leak in the die head blowing system. The bubble of air trapped in the die will expand as it leaves the die head and pop a hole in the parison. Moisture in or on the plastic granules entering the extruder becomes steam bubbles when the plastic leaves the die head. This will weaken the parison and even if the part is formed there will be a surface defect. Tiny unmelted plastic particles called fines will cause a weak spot in a parison. These can come from regrind, or the plastic granules may have become contaminated by foreign particles. Open raw material containers, scrap grinders not thoroughly cleaned, and hoppers are a usual cause for contamination. Processors must protect the plastic raw material from any form of contamination. When the mold halves close, the mold pinch off, usually an insert, closes and welds or seals the parison. The seal can be weak if there is not enough plastic in the pinch area to make a good weld. There must also be enough clamp force to make a good weld. If the pinch off is at the top of the mold, too much parison sag can thin the plastic and weaken the pinch off. The seal can be improved if the pinch angle is made more gradual. This will force more plastic into the pinch area. Increasing the plastic's melt strength will also improve the pinch off area. To do this, you would lower the melt temperature. A lower melt temperature will also cause the mold clamp to increase the pinch force on the plastic. After the plastic is sealed by pinch-offs, the parison is expanded using air pressure. It should expand in a uniform shape until it reaches the cavity walls. If you measure the wall thickness on the opposite sides of a symmetrical blown part and they are not the same, the parison has not expanded uniformly. Either the parison thickness around its circumference is not the same or the parison has a hot spot. Either of these will cause the parison to expand unevenly and may even cause it to blow out. The method I showed earlier of pinching the bottom of the parison closed and then expanding it will show where the parison is either too thin or too hot. A temporary solution can be to inflate the parison more slowly. This gives the thinning plastic more time to cool and strengthen as it expands. If you measure a blown part thickness down its length or around its circumference using a magnetic thickness gauge, you will find wall thickness variations. These variations can be analyzed and adjusted using the techniques from previous lessons. Air in the cavity must be forced out as the parison is expanded. Vents, small undercuts on the mold surface at the parting lines are designed to let air escape as the parison expands. If the air does not escape fast enough, 
This can cause a pocket of trapped air that deforms the part. A deformed part can also result if the air escapes too slowly, delaying the cooling of the plastic. When poor venting is the problem, you should first clean the vents. Then you can try increasing the blowing air pressure to force the air out faster or reduce the rate of airflow to give the trapped air more time to escape. As a quick check to see if venting is the problem, put short sections of tape on the mold surface to hold the mold halves slightly open. If this solves the distortion problem, you know that venting must be improved. You can first try reducing clamp force. This will improve venting. If that works, you should then check to see that the pinch off and seal is still strong enough. Another cause of part distortion can be if the plastic is not cooled evenly by the mold. Using a temperature measuring instrument, measure the mold temperature all across its surface. If there are differences, check the mold cooling line connections and flow. Check the in and out cooling line temperatures. They should not vary by more than 5 degrees Fahrenheit. All molded parts shrink when they cool. The amount of shrinkage depends primarily on the type of plastic. For amorphous plastics such as ABS, polystyrene, and PVC, the volume shrinkage of a blow molded part is about 1%. If the plastic is a semi crystalline type such as polyethylene or polypropylene, the shrinkage volume is 2 to 3%. Shrinkage can vary due to a change in air blowing pressure, a change in the melt temperature of the plastic, or a change in the cooling rate. The plastic containers continue to shrink a small amount for days or even weeks after they are molded. The total volume change is what the manufacturer needs to control. Part appearance is affected by both raw material and processing problems. Appearance defects are among the most difficult to solve because there are so many possible causes. Darkening of plastic shows that either the plastic or the colorant has been degraded. The usual cause is the plastic has been overheated, either too high a temperature or heated for too long a time in some part of the process. A high regrind percentage can be the problem. Sometimes parts can have a streak running vertically down the part. The streak can be caused by unmelted granules, contamination of the plastic, or plastic degradation in one region of the die head. A part with a streak on the surface is usually caused by a nick or scratch in the metal at the exit of the die. The majority of blow molded items are bottles with threaded necks that are sealed with screw caps. It is very important that the neck is molded to precise dimensions and without flash. The molder must keep the parison inside the neck of the mold so that no pinch lines or crushed ears extend from the neck. This can happen if the parison is just slightly too big or not centered in the neck when the mold closes. If the crushed plastic is only on one side, check for parison curl. If the parison falls straight, the die head or mold may be misaligned. Saddle finish is a depression at the neck of the bottle where the two halves of the mold come together. It has the appearance of a saddle. This neck region of the mold is the most difficult to cool, so this plastic cools last and it shrinks the most, causing the depression in the plastic. The solution is to increase cooling of the mold in the neck region so that the surface of this plastic becomes more rigid. Another possible cause of this problem is misaligned blow pin. A third possibility is 
air entrapment. Make sure this region is vented. Plastic in the neck of the bottle does not shrink the same amount around its circumference. The plastic near the parting lines of the mold cools more slowly because that part of the mold is the most difficult to cool. This plastic shrinks more and so the neck goes out of round. It becomes oval. To compensate for this uneven shrinkage, neck mold inserts are made out of round. A less desirable solution is to increase the cycle time to allow more time for this plastic to cool. If the necks were round at one time but now are not, the first place to check is the blow pin. It must be perfectly centered in the opening. Neck chokers are bits of plastic stuck inside the container. If the blow pin enters a parison that is not fully open, the pin can drag part of the parison with it. This plastic then stays inside the neck and obstructs the fill hole. There are four possible causes. First, make sure the blow pin fits inside the parison. Second, that the mold and parison are aligned. Third, the pre-blow air is operating and fourth, the cutting knife is sharp. You may also have to adjust the delay timers. In this course, we discussed many, but not all, of the blow molding problems. The main objective of this course is to show you the technology of extrusion blow molding and give you a method to analyze and solve problems based on technology, not just rules. I think you've discovered that the blow molding process can be pretty complicated, but also that it can be analyzed and understood based on the four basic processing conditions for all plastics.